have a person that's very close and dear to my heart, which is Jeff. Um, I have so much respect for him, not just because he's uh, an incredibly talented developer and smart human being, but he's also a very kind person and a very inspiring person. So I really hope um, you can take that away uh, from him. And he has some sidekicks as well, so I really do think you should prepare yourselves for a very, very special presentation. Jeff, take it away, please. How's everyone doing? My name is Jeff Welpley. I am the co-founder and CTO of GetHuman. I am a Google developer expert, and most important for the purposes of this talk, I am the co-creator of Angular Universal, which is the server rendering library for Angular. Today, I'm going to be talking about a very special server rendering related feature request. It's something that's been around for a while, created in 2016, um, but has continued to pick up momentum over the years to the point where we are on the precipice of some major changes coming to Angular that are going to have some dramatic impacts, positive impacts, on initial load performance and user experience. But before we get to that, I need to set the context and talk a little bit about the history of server-side rendering in general and where Angular fits in. Back in the olden days, the good old days, uh, around the turn of the century, people a lot of developers didn't care too much about client-side programming. Everything was on the server. Your main focus was on server-side technologies, PHP, Ruby on Rails, ASP.NET, Java. And the client-side programming was usually a hacked mess of jQuery that you avoided at all costs if you could. Fast forward 10 years later, 2011, 2012, the web development world literally flipped on its head. Everything was on the client side now. This was the age of the single page application. And server rendering, a lot of times, was reduced in most developers' minds to a relic of the past, something that maybe wasn't even needed at all in the future. At least that was the thinking. More recently, in modern times, a lot of modern web apps, fortunately, utilize both the server and the client to provide the best possible user experience. The focus is on the user. You know, doing stuff client only or server only does help us as developers. It makes our lives easier, less things to like understand and that type of thing. But it doesn't necessarily help the user. The user just wants things to be fast and they don't care about how it's implemented. <clears throat> and how does Angular fit into this? So Angular JS was created, you know, uh, around 2011 or so, at the height of the single page app days. So just like all the other JavaScript frameworks at that time, the main focus was on the client side. They didn't necessarily care too much about the server side. And uh, actually, one interesting uh, trivia question, Angular trivia question that you might not know about, and actually I, I'd known about but I had forgotten about because it's been so long or whatever, is that did you know Angular actually had a server rendering solution that the Angular team had built in 2013 with AngularJS, with Angular version one, but they abandoned it. They literally took it out of the code base. Why did they do that? Igor explains that here. Another reason why we abandoned it was that we realized that the two main reasons why people want server-side rendering, SEO, and the performance improvements would not be an issue for much longer, especially if we focused on the client side and made many improvements on the client side. And later at that same conference, uh, Misko, the creator of Angular, uh, kind of took it a step further. I just want to leave you with a question, and that is that, you know, like, close your eyes and imagine the future and uh, in the possible technologies that we might have in the future. Do you, in the future, imagine yourself that, that server-side rendering is going to be the thing? <laughs> now, I don't know if you heard at the end there that somebody from the crowd screamed out, yeah, that was actually me in, in 2014 in the crowd. And I, you know, I mean, Misko and our friends, like, it, it, he was reflective of the times. Like, that was the common mentality, right? that people were, a lot of people were anti-server rendering. They wanted to just focus on the client side and just make it really good, you know? Um, it's just funny with, with him, though, because, again, reflective of the times, if you talk to um, Misko now, he is actually, can't stop talking about server rendering. He built a, uh, his own new JavaScript framework, Quick, 
that has some of the most advanced server rendering features out there. Uh, and he's one of the industry's uh, le leading thinkers, like uh, definitely just so many amazing things that he's doing with server rendering. Uh, so it's just, uh, again, a sign of the times and, and the shift that, that's going on that I'm talking about. Uh, also interesting, by the way, that guy on the left, uh, Jeff Cross, I, I've seen this video like a million times, and every time I see it, I you know, just wonder, like, what is he thinking about here? <laughs> he is so happy. I, I, I wish we all could be this happy. It takes some serious skills to like, zen out like that on stage. But the thing I got out of ng-conf 2014 was that the Angular team was not going to support server rendering for Angular version 1. So I needed it for work for GetHuman, the, the, where I work, where we actually do a lot of SEO, and uh, I like Angular. So I actually built my own custom, you know, boutique little uh, server rendering library that I called Pancakes, uh, full stack or whatever. Uh, and I talked about it at ng-conf uh, 2015 in a lightning talk um, and went over kind of what I had done and uh, how it worked. But <laughs> the interesting thing was that at that time, 2015, that's when they, the Angular team was right in the middle of building Angular version 2. So most of the talk, I mean, I was discussing th some of them on Angular 1. Everybody was focused on this new thing that was about to come out. Right after my talk, that's when nice gentleman with a lot of hair named uh, Patrick, Patrick JS, or Patrick Stapleton, uh, came up and asked if I wanted to work with him to build server rendering for Angular 2, this new thing that was about to come out. And I thought that sounded good, so uh, we went to Igor and Brad from the Angular team to ask them about it, and they thought it was a good idea too. Um, they didn't have any time to do it themselves because they were just trying to ship. Um, so they assigned our happy bearded friend, Jeff Cross, uh, to work with us as our kind of point of contact with the core team, and Patrick and I got to work. Uh, so we spent most of 2015 building Angular Universal, and right before the next ng Comp 2016, uh, we launched it, and then we got on the big stage to talk about what we did and, uh, you know, go over all the cool stuff or whatever. So now it's 2016, and Angular finally has a server rendering solution. Everything's solved, right? Well, no. Usually when a big thing is launched, there's always issues, and this was the case as well. Uh, developers ran into a number of different uh, problems, and a lot of it came down to the fact that the thing that Patrick and I built was sort of a, a hack on top of Angular 2. We didn't want to, or we couldn't, really make modifications to Angular 2 core because, again, the team was just trying to launch it. There was like so many things going on with it. So we sort of had our own GitHub repo, our own stuff that we kind of like just hooked into what they were doing. And so that's when, at the end of uh, that year, Jeff Cross, the guy was working, we were working with from the core team, uh, created this service request, uh, this feature request rather, that uh, we're talking about today, where he sort of laid out how we could take the work that Patrick and I did outside of Angular Core and actually integrate it into Angular Core in order to solve all the problems that people were facing. Now, this is a very long uh, feature request, really detailed. He did a good job kind of laying everything out. I'm not going to go over it in verbatim. Um, but I would like to summarize this with a live theatrical rendition. <laughs> I have with me some wonderful thespians who are going to be joining me on stage, playing the part of the server view rendered by Angular Universal is Maddie Welpley. <laughs> and playing the part of the client Angular app, uh, Angie Welpley. <laughs> and double role for custom JavaScript hacks, as well as a typical user, is Carolyn Welpley. All right, everybody take your places. Scene one, Angular destructive re-rendering. So when uh, Angular, uh, the Angular Universal, first renders, when Angular server first renders, <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, the server view is what the user sees first. You know, there could be text, ads, images, uh, buttons, etc. But unfortunately and tragically for our beautiful, wonderful server view, 
as soon as the client app downloads and bootstraps, it viciously attacks the server view and <laughs> completely destroys it. <laughs> then the user sees the client rendered view, the user sees the client rendered view with images and buttons that are all different than, it may look the same, but are different than what the server view had. The server view, unfortunately and tragically, is dead. <laughs> End scene, reset. All right, scene two. So even though the client view wants to destroy the server view, uh, there are some hacks, there's some workarounds that the community's come up with uh, that, have, that have helped. It doesn't solve the issue, but uh, help make it a little bit less violent. Uh, so server view gets rendered again. <laughs> uh, but this time, we have some of our custom JavaScript hacks that are inlined within the server view that uh, try to help with the situation. So when the client app downloads and bootstraps and wants to destroy the server view, the custom acts stop the mayhem, try to make the trade. It still destroys the server view, ultimately, but the custom hacks, hacks help make it a little bit less violent and done with more love. <laughs> yes. So what we really want, though, is what's called non-destructive full app hydration. That's the solution that uh, Jeff Cross lays out in the feature request. And so the way that works is that, once again, the user sees the uh, or the, the universal server view. <laughs> okay. Uh, but when the client app downloads and bootstraps, when the client app downloads and bootstraps, <clears throat> uh, instead of rendering anything, it attaches itself to the server view and just works together with the server view just to respond to user events such as clicking on a button. There's one problem with this solution, and that is, let's do a quick reset. The timing of things. If after the universal server view is rendered, but before the client has a chance to download and bootstrap, if the user clicks on the server view button, nothing happens because the client isn't there. There's nothing to actually respond to it. Of course, once the client does finish rendering, or the cl client finished downloading and bootstrapping, then it will respond. So how do we fix this? Let's reset one more time. So the solution to that is sort of the uh, more advanced version of uh, non-destructive hydration, which is progressive hydration. And so the way that works is the server view gets rendered one more time. Now, there doesn't have to be any client-side app at all, there's, there's some small uh, inline JavaScript here, but the client-side app, the Angular app that you built on the client side, doesn't have to be there at all. But when a user interacts with the page, let's say clicks on the button, the client app at that time, or just a small piece of the client app, responds to the event immediately. It downloads uh, on the fly lazy, lazily and responds to the event. And that's the summary, that's the play. Let's give a round of applause to our Wonderful actors. <laughs> Great job, guys. All right. <laughs> Great job. So that gives you an overall idea of everything here. Uh, but let's get into some of the details. Let's talk about you know, what are the specific problems that developers run into with Angular Universal. And let's talk more about the solution, which is, like we said, non-destructive hydration. So there's three main problems that developers have had since the, since the initial launch of Angular Universal. And with, uh, let's get into each of these. So with ads, the issue is that when the client destroys the server, it creates uh, a major issue with most ad networks uh, frown on this because they don't want client-side JavaScript to mess with, uh, do anything with a rendered ad. Uh, so you can sometimes get banned for this, some, or at the very least, it adversely affects your revenue. 
The other two problems are uh, user experience related and can adversely affect your page rank, which affects SEO, poor user experience, et cetera. So uh, I picked out like the two biggest ones. And so LCP is, is one of the biggest ones. And what that is, is, so this is a time series which shows over time how a page um, is loaded onto the screen. And the FCP, or first contentful paint, is the very first uh, paint that the user sees, or, or uh, biggest one um, initially. And that typically comes from the server view. So that's where Angular Universal does shine. So the FCP usually is, for Angular Universal apps, it usually is very good. So that's great. But then the client side kicks in and starts rendering on the page, and that's where you see changes. Uh, depending on your app, depending on data, et cetera, it can be different. But this is an example where things are like changing over time until the LCP is the moment where above the fold, things stop changing. So the, the JavaScript does not change anything until the user interacts with the page. That's, that's the LCP. And if you're not careful with Angular apps, it can be quite high, and that can adversely affect your page rank and everything else. And then the last thing is TTI, or time to interactive. And that's something that we demonstrated in the play here where the user uh, clicks on a button on the server view before the client-side JavaScript downloads and bootstraps. So uh, a bad user experience, very frustrating, uh, definitely an issue. So these are all problems that have existed since Universal um, was first released. Uh, fortunately, users in the comments of the feature request started adding all sorts of really interesting workarounds. And, and uh, nothing that like fully solved the problems, nothing to the solution of the uh, non-destructive hydration that we're going to talk about, but uh, some stuff that helps. So for ads, for example, if you just have it on the client, so a client only, and just have like a blank on the server, or if on the server side it's outside the Angular root, either of those options will avoid um, you know, an ad network uh, violation. Um, it, but these both do have other downsides, so they're not perfect. For uh, LCP, if your client view is exactly the same as your server view, the LCP should be close to the FCP time. Um, it's just hard to do this because any little change will cause the LCP time to jump uh, later in the future. And uh, it, I, I spend a lot of time with my own app, like trying to get this right. And still, you know, as changes happen, as data changes, um, there's uh, differences that happen. So it, it's hard to maintain. But if they're the same, your LCP will be better. And then with TTI, th this one's actually much harder to uh, solve, especially with like kind of hacks. But I did uh, do, uh, do something myself. Um, and, th and there's other ones out there that other people have done um, using a library that I created a long time ago called Preboot, where uh, Preboot's inlined within the server view and starts recording user events on the server view as you load Angular client in off the main thread in a web worker. And then it replays everything. This is. Very complicated. It's hard to set up. It's kind of error prone or whatever. So it's not perfect. Um, it, but with all of these workarounds, the point is that they can help in certain situations with the current version if you, if you need them. But they're not the solution. The solution that we're trying to get to is you know, non-destructive hydration. It's something that is very detailed by Jeff Cross in the initial feature request. We've sort of known about it all along that this is what we wanted to do. but you know, we haven't been able to do it for seven years, right? We haven't implemented anything for this. You know, why is that? Turns out that there's actually like a pretty good reason why. And it has to do with the design of the original implementation of Angular 2. So when Angular runs, when you run Angular, it cr spins up an internal um, set of structures, uh, JavaScript objects uh, in memory and that I'm referring to as the component state. So it's sort of the internal representation of your app. And that happens both on the server side or the client side today with Angular Universal or you know, just running Angular in the client. That is separate from the rendered HTML in the DOM. Uh, what happens is, and the, the issue, is that the original design for Angular 2 had it so that the, the application layer with your component state was completely decoupled from the rendered layer with your HTML. And, oh. <laughs> um, 
and it was a one-way flow between the two. And, and they did that on purpose because they wanted to be able to have freedom at the application layer to make all sorts of changes without the render la layer have to, having to know anything about it. Ideally, the rendered layer wouldn't know anything about the application layer, right? So it made sense at the time, except that in order for hydration to work, you do have to have the rendered layer have knowledge of the application layer. Specifically, you have to be able to serialize the server component state into a JSON object into, in the server view so that the client app can uh, use that as a map of sorts of how to reconstruct the component state uh, tree without re-rendering, if that makes sense. Uh, so this is something where in 2016, after we launched uh, Angular Universal, I took a look at this and so I spent like months, literally months, trying to build this with the initial version, the very initial version of Angular 2. And we eventually gave up. So like, I mean, when I say we, you know, Patrick, I, uh, Jeff Cross, and actually Tobias, uh, who's like the main architect of a lot of the internals within Angular 2. Um, it's not that it was impossible, but it's just, we determined that the amount of changes that would have been required to Angular Core to enable this, it was just way too intrusive and required way too much at a time where they were trying to stabilize stuff and stop making changes to something so they could ship it, right? Um, so we couldn't do it that time. But two years later, uh, they released Ivy, uh, which was a pretty big update to the Angular internals where uh, Tobias was able to get in like some of the changes that we were talking about back then. Like not everything, but he started to build like a pretty big chunk of it. And then there were a couple other iterations over the next four years after that leading up to today where some changes were made to sort of uh, remove some of those barriers and to be able to get to this point, which we are able to do today, which is great. Basically, we have today all of the pieces in place to do non-destructive hydration where we didn't in the past, which is just amazing. And <laughs> the funny thing is, when I uh, you know, applied uh, to do a talk at uh, NGB uh, and I sort of envisioned what I was gonna talk about, uh, this is sort of where I thought I was going to finish it up and maybe like talk about like, okay, Let's work together. Let's, let's hear the pieces. We can do it now. We, 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 I haven't been able to do this for seven years. Now we can. Let's work together and get it done. Um, but we're off the hook. <laughs> uh, because you know, just a couple weeks ago, Jeff Cross posted an update to the feature request uh, with a tweet from Minko saying that the Angular team is working on non-destructive hydration for Angular. And Minko actually even updated it. Uh, yes, you can clap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just last week, uh, updating the feature request that they're in fact already shipping parts of hydration uh, into Angular Core. That it's not something that uh, you can try out yet, um, but I've been part of the group that's been testing it out, and it is like real. And it, which is crazy to me that it's been all this time, and then all of a sudden, like from from my perspective, like kind of uh, going through all that process, and then within the course of like a very short period of time getting to this point is like really crazy. Um, so like I feel great about things that we are literally going to have at the beginning of full app hydration with version 16 of Angular. Just awesome. And we are well on our way to eventually getting to progressive hydration down the road. So that, that won't happen right away. Um, but, but we're definitely on the right path. So I realized that with everything I've talked about today, I've shown you a lot of treats, a lot of Angular treats, and uh, I know we're close to lunch. I know you're hungry. I, uh, I get that. Um, and you can't try them yet, right? Uh, it, it's something that is, isn't coming out yet. I wasn't able to uh, get into the details of like the exact API and stuff like that because all that is changing. But the important thing is understanding that, that it's, it is happening, it's close, like we're, we're up uh, very close to a hu huge milestone. Um, and if there's one thing that I've kind of come to appreciate over the years of working in open source, it's that your voice matters. So if you are interested in all the stuff that I talked about today, you should use this link to go to the feature request, 
you know, thumbs up my comment, click on the bell notification for updates, add your own comments, because the more of our community that shows their support for this, uh, this topic, this feature request, the, the, you know, server rendering, everything related to performance, you know, all the stuff I'm talking about today, the more support they shows, the higher priority it's gonna be, and the faster we're gonna get to progressive hydration and beyond. <laughs> Let's go to lunch. All right.